a luxury paddle wheel steamship lazily chugs up the Mississippi River. Meanwhile, her passengers whine and dine, taking selfies on their phone and uploading the highlights of their trip to Instagram. This is the way of the modern riverboat. However, in their heyday, steamships were not only absolutely necessary, but incredibly dangerous. Welcome to Fast Facts Friday. My name is Eleanor. Just a quick disclaimer for our younger audience before we dive in. This story may be disturbing to some, so viewer discretion is advised. Okay, everyone, let's get into it. This week, we are on the second longest river in the United States, the Mississippi River. The river stretches from northern Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico, serving as one of the connections between the Great Lakes area and the Atlantic Ocean. The Mississippi River is 2,350 miles long, and its largest tributary, the Missouri River, is only 100 miles longer than it. It has been integral to American culture and history, cultivating commerce, travel, and cultural exchange all along the river. Navigating the Mississippi River isn't anything new. People had been traversing this river for hundreds of years before the steamboat. However, steamships made things much more streamlined. Steamship technology was not viable until the early 1800s, though prototypical steamships were well underway within a short span of six years, starting with the first steamboat to travel on the Mississippi River, New Orleans. Her maiden voyage in October of 1811 began in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and ended in New Orleans, Louisiana, with the ship traveling along the Ohio and Mississippi Rivers. She was a large, heavy sidewheeler with a very deep draft. Her low-pressure Bolton and Watt steam engine powered a complex powertrain that was also heavy and inefficient, though she was the first of her kind. Four more ships would come in rapid succession from varying owners at this time, the next being Comet, the second Mississippi steamboat. She was launched in Pittsburgh in 1813, though she was much smaller than New Orleans. She was also the first Mississippi steamboat powered by a lightweight and efficient high-pressure engine turning a stern paddle wheel. Next would come Vesuvius, launched in 1814, also in Pittsburgh, and she looked very similar to New Orleans. Then would be Enterprise, also launched in 1814, but this time in Brownsville, Pennsylvania. She was extremely different from these previous three steamships design-wise, and had a high-pressure steam engine, single stern paddle wheel, and a shoal draft, which proved much better for the Mississippi than deeper drafted ships. Her most famous voyage was an epic distance of more than 2,000 miles from Brownsville to New Orleans, easily conquering the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. And finally, we have Washington, launched in 1816 at Wheeling, West Virginia. She was the first steamboat to have two decks, with the upper deck for passengers and the main deck for the boiler and cargo. Her draft was only four feet deep, being propelled by a high-pressure, horizontally mounted engine, turning a single stern paddle wheel. She would complete the same voyage completed by Enterprise in just 25 days, which is impressive for a much heavier and larger ship. In the 1830s, we run into what is called the Golden Age of the Steamboat, and they were everywhere. Every major tributary and the Mississippi itself were littered with beautiful steamboats, which majorly enhanced the growth of Mississippi's riverfront communities like Commerce, Bolivar, and Greenville, as well as many others. Steamboats also brought in new settlers to the state of Mississippi, rapidly growing agricultural development in the Mississippi Delta, known for its rich, fertile soil. Not everything was fun in the sun, however. There were some major disasters and chaotic devastation from the onset of the steamboat in 1811, and from this point up until 1853, there were an estimated 7,000 fatalities that occurred due to the catastrophic boiler explosions on steamboats traveling on the Mississippi River. One of the most famous explosions happened in 1865, and this was the Sultana, killing 1,167 people. This remains the worst maritime disaster in United States history. If you're interested in her story, we do have an episode on her. The main reason there were so many boiler explosions, especially between 1811 and 1853, was a combination of poor boiler construction and unsafe operation, making steamboat explosions frequent. In his 1842 travelogue, American Notes, Charles Dickens commented on the issue, stating, quote, American steamboats usually blow up one or two a week in the season. 
That would be more than alarming for travelers. But no need to be alarmed during this episode. If you're enjoying this episode and want to hear more about ships, their careers, and their wrecks, check out our main show, Shipwreck Sunday, every Sunday night at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, let's look further into boiler explosions. These boilers were ticking time bombs, and it started with their construction. Boilers that were used in early Mississippi River steamboats were constructed from many small pieces of riveted cast iron instead of larger sheets like we see later down the line. The ability to create large sheets of cast iron hadn't been developed yet, and because of this, most of these boilers suffered from poor workmanship in their construction and were prone to failure. Not only this, but now we look at unsafe practices after their construction. Steamboat engines were often pushed far beyond their limits and cared for by engineers who lacked the knowledge they needed to keep everyone safe. Not only this, but there was no one regulating operation, inspections were not adequate, and neither was maintenance, and this led to catastrophic explosions more often than not. Despite these dangers, steamboats were still far superior over land travel at this time, so passengers just accepted the high risk of boiler explosion to get where they needed to go. Boat operators didn't have to have any kind of insurance and they weren't liable for accidents, so they were not incentivized to improve safety measures. It took a lot of accidents and a lot of people dying for this to change. To really demonstrate how frequent these explosions were, let's look at the expanse of time from 1825 to 1838. In 1825, the tech exploded and killed 60 people. In 1826, both the Ohio and the Macon exploded, with the Union and the Hornet exploding in 1827. In 1828, the Grampus exploded, and then in 1829, both the Patriot and the Kennewa exploded. In 1830, the Car of Commerce and the Portsmouth exploded, and finally the Moselle in 1838. Steamships were used more than just accommodating passengers, however. During the American Civil War, they had a key role to play. The state of Mississippi seceded from the Union on January 9, 1861, and so many steamboats would be used to support the Confederacy after the beginning of the Civil War on April 12, 1861. Steamboats would transport troops, provisions, and supplies along the Mississippi during the American Civil War. The demand for ships was so high for both the Confederates and the Union that their governments each started chartering passenger ships for the war effort. River boats also played a key role in the defense of Vicksburg, an important Confederate stronghold that connected the South to the West. As we know, the Confederacy did surrender on April 9, 1865, and Abraham Lincoln was assassinated just five days later on April 14, 1865. Now, let's look at gambling and gaming on the river. Gambling on the Mississippi River became incredibly popular and profitable in the early 1900s because of legislation surrounding gaming. Poker, roulette, and other games of chance were restricted to purely to riverboats, and because of this, business owners could evade the anti-gambling laws that were in effect on land in states along the Mississippi. In 1993, it was once again legal to gamble on riverboats, however, Hurricane Katrina destroyed many riverboat casinos in 2005. As a response to this, Mississippi lawmakers allowed casinos to move 800 feet inland and no further. Today, you can still find a few riverboat casinos throughout the United States. Speaking of today, let's look at the current state of Mississippi steamboats. According to National Geographic, the growth of railroads across the U.S. significantly stunted the demand for transporting goods and people on steamboats by 1900. Many riverboats were retired, but there are a few that remain as showboats that remain as a testament to this period in time. The riverboats that do exist on the Mississippi River are very popular, with some that are still used for transportation and many others that are more of luxuries, with first-class accommodations, fine dining, and a ton of different activities you can do while enjoying the beautiful scenery on the Mississippi River. Mississippi steamships played a crucial role in the American way of living in the 19th century and during the American Civil War. Today, steamships are a testament to the past and a reminder of where we came from. If you liked that story and wanted to hear something similar, check out our Mississippi River Ships playlist in the cards. Stay tuned this Sunday for the story of the Steamboat Monmouth disaster, a horrific accident on the Mississippi River that resulted in the death of over 300 Muscogee people and was selected by our YouTube members. Thank you for tuning into Fast Facts Friday. Have a lovely weekend, and we'll see you next time.